Hello YouTube, welcome back to the shop. On this episode of What's in Yours, we are going to be opening the deck to see what's under the hood. Also, we're going to be going over a couple of things I discussed in the last video. And well, one thing that I forgot to discuss is if your handlebars are loose, then what you're going to want to do is take this nut right here and this nut right here. Take your pair of channel locks or a big adjustable wrench and you're going to tighten these. Uh, this one will be clockwise, this will be counterclockwise. That will make this stem a little bit stronger. You won't have so much play. Then also too, I mentioned something about these chargers that one of the wires was thinner than the others. The one that came with it is an 18 gauge wire or the one I bought additionally from their website. It says point, uh, I think it was 0 0.075 millimeters, I think which corresponds to uh, about 20 gauge. So I don't know why that is, maybe they just ran out of plugs and decided to give me that one but you can see the differences between these two now from here on the plug-in end it's exactly the same the specs on the wires also too the specs on the chargers itself um, are exactly the same it was just these two I mean charge is fine I haven't had any issues with it um, so that was just something worth mentioning also too when I charge when I'm charging my scooter these have a tendency to get really hot, so what I'll do is I'll run a fan. I'll, I'll set them on a crate, put a fan in front of them, and just keep them cool. I mean, I, I don't know if them getting hot is going to hurt anything, but uh, just something I thought also worth mentioning. So without further ado, let's get into taking this deck off and see what's under this hood. Bear with me, I'm not a professional cameraman, so we're gonna do the best we can, and I'll walk you through it. And at the same time, we'll be, we will be going through the wiring diagram. I emailed Nan Robot and had them, had them send me a wiring diagram of the controllers. So we'll be going over the wiring as well. Um, this is going to take either a 530 seconds Allen or a 4 millimeter. So, you just have to be careful not to crank on these too much. I'll take them out like this, but when I'm putting them back, I'll tighten it down with the drill. But um, I'll do the end tightening with this because if you can see, uh, cheap little screws got some divots in it. So, I'm going to be careful of that. All right. Now, one of the things you'll notice, you'll see some RTV going around here. Um, I did that for a little bit of extra water protection because it does not have a gasket. And I figured, well, I'll just put a little bead around here. And if I need to take the deck off, I can scrape it off and put a little bit more. But I guess you could also put a gasket around here and help seal it up a little bit. Um, but so here's your battery 52 volts 23.4 amp hours the date and dual moto is the manufacturer i'm assuming but i tried to go online and look them up i could not find them but one thing i've noticed in here is just a spaghetti mess of wiring and kind of cheap the way they did it they put these little foam pads to kind of keep this in place when you put the deck on you you got to secure it down they got this double-sided sticky tape to kind of hold the battery in place i mean i understand why they did that it's vibration on also too when you take the battery out there's also double-sided sticky tape there on the bottom i guess for vibration but we're going to take this out now i've had this battery out before already and the battery weighs uh, 13 and a half pounds, if anybody cares. So, here's the wiring. It's all just jumbled, kind of up in there. 
with the controllers. These are your two controllers right here. Um, it says 52 volts at 25 amps. It's a JMP controller. Um, I looked up the, I tried to look up this number here. Um, I couldn't find anything on it. So, um, I, I don't know if it's proprietary, I doubt it. Then also too, it has uh, all this white goo on it, but that's just heat sink paste um, with these controllers. Now, initially when I took out the battery, it was kind of stuck in here because of that double-sided sticky tape. But if you just be real careful with it, you can pop it right back off of there. See, that's a double-sided sticky tape. I'll put that there. And so I just basically took it out from here and just uh, weighed it. Now, one thing to notice on the battery too, it's actually pretty simple how they've done it. They got your two power wires that are connected to each controller. Each There's two controllers because they need one for each motor. So you have uh, this power wire, positive and negative, this one too. And then also you got these other two sets of wires, black and red, black and red here. And those simply go to the two charging ports right here, which I'll show you in just a second. So, those two black, black and red wires go right here to the charging ports, these two charging ports here. So the only, that's the only wires coming out of the battery. Now, I don't know what type of battery this is. I don't know if they're Samsung or LG or Panasonic. I emailed uh, Nanrobot, but they didn't give me any information. I think a lot of times a bot responds to my questions. But anyways, so here's the wiring diagram they sent, which we got the motor wires, connect the battery, rear lights, bridge wire, that bridge wire is for the two controllers to be able to talk to each other. You got your light, front light wire, dual single mode, LCD displays, that's your throttle control, your turbo and eco mode, and uh, your brake light, which we don't have. We don't have a brake light on the D4. Um, so if, we go, if we're going through this wiring spaghetti mess, looks like you got some kind of MOSFET controller or something right here. Um, also, too, if you notice on the connections, uh, so what I've seen in cheaper scooters, uh, I would expect a little bit better connections with this, but they just put hot glue to kind of waterproof this and vib vibration proof it. It's kind of chintzy, but I mean, whatever. So your motor wires, uh, sorry it's black and white, that's the way they send it to me, but your motor wires, let's see here, it's going to be these thicker wires right here going to your motors because they're going to be like a three phase type of motor. But so you got this one right here, uh, let's see that one is going to the rear motor. And then this one right here is going to the forward, going to the forward motor. Um, your rear light, I'm assuming it's this one right here, but it's not plugged into anything. It's, I guess, maybe for a rear brake light. Also, it has this, uh, I think it's for an alarm. I've seen this on my buddy's scooter. It's for, I uh, had an alarm connected to it with a little key fob. Uh, let's see here. Then, if you notice these wires right here, it's going to your LED lights on the back of the scooter. Right there. I mean, it's not, not really a lot to it. Uh, once they give you a schematic for it. It just uh, seemed like a whole bunch of spaghetti mess because they just shove it all in there. 
but you have this bridge wire. This is the wire I'm talking about right here. This is the bridge wire. It bridged the, bridges the two controllers together. I don't know, really know how they have all that wired in because uh, it's, it's hard to get through all this spaghetti mess of, of wiring. You want to be careful with some of this wiring too because it is pretty small stuff. And then let's see, light wire going to the front. Uh, it's hard to tell what color it is, but once you pick through it and follow the wires um, going to where they're landing, you can kind of see from here. But my main goal was to put this out on video. So if you ever have any issues or something's not working, you can um, go in there and maybe you have a loose connection or something and can kind of troubleshoot it. So that was the main main goal for that. And I want to kind of give you guys an idea of what this thing looked like inside. So I got all, all this empty space. I actually was talking to a manufacturer about getting a bigger battery uh, for this thing, but apparently they can't make a bigger battery for this space. I can't remember the dimensions on this space because there are some scooters that actually have these controllers mounted on the outside of the scooter. Um, and then you can route some of those wires on the outside in some type of holder and you could have more space for a bigger battery. But I think they need to go wider on this battery if you wanted to, let's say. So the manufacturer I talked to, the largest battery they could give me is a, it was a Samsung 24 and a half amp hours and it was for like 380 dollars uh, i don't think that included shipping um but i was just like eh you know that's it's a little bit too expensive just to get another amp hour out of it and i don't think maybe you get some range but as far as speed again you know i, I complained before in the other video i can't i can't get it over 32 miles an hour so um that's basically it on the on the guts of this thing i mean it's pretty atrocious the way they threw everything in here but it fits and it works so i mean i guess you get what you pay for now my buddy just ordered a or just received his dualtron 3 and so he should be bringing it by this weekend and we're going to open the decks on both of these things and we're going to uh, compared the two now from what he's told me so far the wiring inside the dualtron is pretty well put together the battery is in a hard case where this one is kind of shrink wrap and has this goo on it to kind of waterproof it to a certain extent see there it's just like hot glue whatever um so we'll definitely see uh you know because when we first talking about ordering scooters i mean his was you know twenty seven hundred dollars compared to this you know, thirteen hundred dollar one. I think I got this to my door for twelve eighty nine, and that's because they also had a sixty dollar coupon. So I, I, I'm thinking in this scenario, we definitely get what we paid for because this scooter is ready to go forty miles an hour. It will not do it. His scooter is ready to go forty miles an hour, and it does it all day long. And it takes him up steep inclines at thirty seven miles an hour, which I thought was pretty well. Now I've, I've said it before that this scooter does really well on hills and a lot of people ask me you know what's your range and what's your speed going up hills um and you know blah 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 but it's it all depends how you ride if you're riding with dual motors single motors i mean there's no way to actually test all those different ones if i if i spent hours and hours and hours of riding this until it went dead and then you know what am i going to be five miles away from my house and this thing goes dead and i call an uber or i have somebody uh follow me around but what i am going to do is i'm going to put both motors on i'm going to hit it at full throttle and i'm going to run this thing till it dies i'm going to have my buddy follow me in his car so i don't have to push try to push this thing back to the house and we're going to see on the most extreme conditions how far uh what's the range we can get out of the scooter at the most extreme conditions and then anything from that lower if you're using one motor or if you're going a little bit slower you can kind of get an idea of what range you're going to get now one thing also on the scooter that's very important is the kickstand 
if these bolts come loose, you have to do what I just did. You have to take out the battery and take out the controller because you have to put an Allen key on the back side of this, uh, on the inside of the battery casing to hold these screws so you can tighten this up, which kind of sucked. Uh, but, well, it kind of sucked because you had to take everything out, but that's what you're going to have to do. Uh, and so I took everything out. I tightened them up real good. These are nylon locking nuts, so hopefully they won't come loose again. But, you know, once you've taken this stuff out a couple of times, uh, it, it's pretty easy. And then also, too, I'll give you what the controller says here, if you can see that. 52 volts DC at 25 amps. Now, the motors, I got the specs from uh, NanRobot, and they said these motors are 23 amps. So I guess it gives a little extra, you know, there for when you're going up a steep hill. It doesn't overamp the controllers. Controllers don't get too hot. I've, I've taken the deck off after long rides. I mean, they get warm, but they don't get really hot. Uh, same thing with the motors. So um, I'm going to put all this stuff back together, and that would be it. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. And my next video is probably going to be a night ride. Um, I'll show you how well the, this light does here because this light that came with the scooter really sucks. And by the way, too, Nan Robot is not paying me for any of this. I'm just giving you the good, bad, uh, ugly. <coughs> Excuse me. I've been dealing with the head cold. And I'll probably do a video of a night ride. Um, nothing, nothing special. But when my buddy comes this weekend, we're definitely going to be comparing. We'll be reviewing the Dualtron 3, and then we'll be comparing the two scooters um, against each other. So thanks a lot for watching. And um, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and we will talk to you later.